All right, this is 7.4. <clears throat> we're looking at midpoints and medians in triangles. In this section, we're going to examine the properties of line segments that divide triangles in various ways. These properties are useful in calculations for the design of buildings and machi machinery. What are the properties of the midpoints of the sides of a triangle? So the first step, it tells us to draw a large triangle on a sheet of pe paper Label the vertices A, B, C, and D, then measure the length of side A, B, and mark the midpoint. So we're going to draw a large triangle, and this should work for any triangle. The only thing I would suggest is try to be uh, <coughs> fairly straight with your lines. Okay, it doesn't matter so much the length. There's my triangle, A, B, C, okay. Then it says measure the length of side AB and mark the midpoint. Label this point D, find the midpoint of AC, so we want to find the midpoints of each. AB, that's 12, so my midpoint is 6. Eight, my midpoint is four. Fourteen, midpoint is seven. D, A, C, and label it E. Draw a line segment from D to E. All right. Measure the lengths of DE and BC. How are these lengths related? So DE and BC, I'm going to measure four centimeters and eight centimeters. So how are they related? BC is twice the length of DE. Okay? Remember now, this point and this point here is the midpoint of this side and this side respectively. Okay? The dashes mean equal, okay? The same number of dashes mean that side is equal. So this side is equal to this side, not necessarily equal to this side but these two sides are equal. Are you guys all familiar with the dashes? Okay, good. If the co-interior angles formed by a transversal and two line segments are supplementary, the two segments are parallel. Determine whether DE is parallel to BC. So, <coughs> we don't have a protractor here, but it's telling us if, if the angles are the same, by a transversal and two line segments are supplementary. So two line segments and a transversal, we can measure the angles, but bottom line we can see that DE here is parallel to BC. So to demonstrate that, we would draw this arrow in, okay? And typically you draw two arrows for parallel. You guys familiar with those arrows indicating parallel lines? Yes? Okay, good. Fold your diagram across the line through points D and E. Where does the vertex A touch the lower part of the diagram? So across the line D and E, where does vertex A touch? So we're going to fold right across D and E. And if you can see it on the screen, through the paper, can you guys see that? Yeah. Vertex A is right there, which is on 
the other side of the triangle. Okay. What can you conclude about the heights of triangle ADE and triangle ABC? How is the height of D ADE related to the height of the quadrilateral BCED? So the height of ADE and ABC. So ADE and ABC. So what is the relationship? Who can tell me? Yeah. No. Tim. Angle ABC's height is taller than ADE's. Is what? Uh, doubled. Doubled, yes. So not just taller, but doubled, yeah. All and you wouldn't say angle, you'd say triangle. All yeah? the side lengths are doubled. Like, it goes from 4 centimeters to 8 centimeters, and then if you measure the bottom, they both. Yeah, you can see that here. You're right. The, the side lengths are doubled. Good. But, but they're asking specifically about the height. So the height of this triangle so remember when we say triangle, the height, triangle, let's use H, triangle, height of triangle A, B, C, so A, B, C is equal to two times the height of triangle A, D, B. Any questions there? Yeah. Isn't that asking for the midpoint from A to the middle of DE and the middle of DE to the middle of BC? Yeah, but this is your triangle, right? It's two times the height. This is your one big triangle here, and this is your other triangle. Which line? Yeah, it's horizontal in mine too. Here. No, they're double. Because look, one, two, one, two, right? You know what I'm saying? This is not a triangle. That's the second part of the question. The first part, Adam. Right? C5? What can you conclude about the heights of ADE and ABC? Right? Okay, no problem. So this is ADE and this is ABC. So the height is doubled, right? Okay. The next one says, how is the height of ADE, so this triangle, related to the height of quadrilateral BCED? And that one, the height is the same. Okay? Everybody see that? So showing on the screen again, this big triangle here, this height is doubled the small triangle. So we can tell that when we fold it. Okay? This height of this triangle is also the same as the height as this quadrilateral. All right? You see that? So their their height is the same. So the height of triangle ADE is equal to the height of quadrilateral Let's just use the same nomenclature, B, C, D, E, D. B, C, E, D. Any questions? AJ. How are they the same? Okay, so, so watch, AJ. So here's the A, D, E triangle, right? Right here, yeah. right? So our height is from here to here, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to take that distance and I'm going to fold it over. Can you see through the paper? Yeah. How it lines up okay. on the other side? You see that? Yeah, but is the height going from this side to the A? The height, the height is from any vertex 90 degrees down to the opposite side. Oh, okay. Okay? And so I know this is 90 degrees from A because I folded it right on DE. So I'm folding at a 90 degrees, right? When I fold like that. Okay? Okay. So we're comparing uh, this height here. This height to this height. Okay? Yeah. All right. Compare your results from step 
two to five with your classmates. Reflect, do you think your results apply for all triangles? Explain your reasoning. So I'm hoping that you guys had similar results. Did you? Yes, we did, right? So we can conclude then that the properties are the same. Let's check it out now. Example one, in areas that get a lot of snow, cottages are often built with a triangular shape called an A-frame. This shape helps prevent damage from heavy loads of snow on the roof. Find the width of the floor of the upper room in this cottage. So here's our cottage. I believe the width of the upper floor would be DE. I believe, if, not, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see, since BD is equal to DA, so BD is equal to DA, so we know that it's given, three and three. Okay, those sides are equal. Point D is the midpoint of side AB, okay, that makes sense. Similarly, point E is the, side, the midpoint of AC, so this side, well, it's three again, so I can use that same dash. So here's the midpoint of AC. From the properties of midpoints that we determined with our folding triangle, DE must be half the length of BC. So DE, this length here, is half the length of BC. That's a property that we found out ourselves through, through experimentation with that piece of paper. So if this is six, what is the length of DE? Henry? Three, yeah, it's half, right? So here, three meters, okay? And that's because DE is equal to one-half BC. Okay, and here's BC. Any questions? B, find the height of the upper room. So the height of the upper room would be this height here. We know that that height is equal to the opposing quadrilateral height, which is 2.5, right? We did that when we did that fold over, right? So the height of the upper room then is 2.5. Any questions? All right. Two definitions here, median, it's the line segment joining a vertex of a triangle to the midpoint of the opposite side. Bisect means you divide two equal parts. So very important definitions. You also use them quite a bit in grade 10. Median, from a vertex to the opposing side's midpoint. So in a triangle, how many medians are you going to have, Alvin? Three, right. So Matthew in the front here, if I were to draw median C, or sorry, vertex from median C. Where would I draw this line from? From here to where? Uh, in between. In between? More specifically? <laughs> You're right, in between, but more specifically? I'm going to draw like this, Matthew. That's in between A and B. By no, not 9 degrees. No, it's cl that's the point you got to be careful of. Max. Uh, you put the midpoint of AB. Yeah, see this, Matthew, right here? Midpoint of the opposite side, okay? So you'd have to find where the middle is. And it's not always going to be 90 degrees. So this looks like 90 degrees, right, Matthew? But it, it's not necessarily, okay? All right, the median, the show that the median bisects the area of a triangle. So we want to know if this line, or sorry, that's the median C. We'll go with the one that they have, AD. So let me just redraw this. Okay, so we want to see if this 
line here, which is the median, bisects the area of the triangle. So I call them A1 and A2. So we want to see that the area of A1 is equal to the area of A2. Remember this angle here does not necessarily equal 90 degrees. You can see there better that it's not in fact 90 degrees. Okay? So the formula for the area of a triangle we should know it's base times height divided by 2. Since CD is equal to BD, so CD is equal to BD, so this side is equal to this side. The base of the triangle ACD and ADB are equal. So ADB and ADC, these bases are the same. Everyone agree with that? Okay, by definition of what a median is. These two triangles also have the same height shown by altitude AE. So if this is, this is our line, it's also being used as our height. And it's the same line. Sorry. Kind of an important note here. It's tough to see in my drawing. And they didn't draw the line in for some reason. I think there's a mistake in the textbook. There should be a line here. There is, there is an okay, so it's not, in my, it's not in mine, but it's corrected in yours. Do you see that 90 degree symbol, the box? Yeah. To get the height of a triangle, as I mentioned, it's 90 degrees from a vertex to the opposing side. Okay? So here's the vertex A, it has to drop down 90 degrees. So notice how A, D, and E are in different locations. You guys see that? However, that height is the same. So you can have a triangle like this with an obtuse angle. Let's say you had a triangle like this. Here's our base. Let's say the base is 5. The height is always going to be from the vertex 90 degrees to the opposing side. So in this particular triangle, I can't draw a line inside the triangle to get 90 degrees. So what you need to do is extend the base and your line, your height line, comes down at 90 degrees. Do you guys see that? And that is actually, this, this measure here will be part of your one-half base times height formula. Okay, so you might not have seen that before. In an obtuse triangle, the height is actually outside the triangle. You guys see that? Okay, so although for triangle ABD, the height is inside, so it looks normal. It looks like the normal height of a triangle. When we see a triangle like this, you guys are all familiar with seeing you know, this is the height and this is the base. Agreed? You might not be used to seeing the height on the outside of the triangle. Be familiar with that. That can happen in obtuse triangles. And that's exactly what's happening in triangle ADC in this case. AJ? So notice they share the same base line. So that's why this line AE is the height for both triangles. Very tough to see in this drawing. Tougher in this drawing. And I've tried to highlight it here in the two separate triangles. You guys get that? I hope that makes sense. So therefore the median AD divides uh, the area of ABC into two equal parts. So A1 is equal to A2. Why? Because the area and the base, sorry, the base and the height are the same. If we have the same base, we have the same height, we're going to get the same area. Base times height divided by 2. Agreed? <coughs> Alright. The same logic applies to the median drawn from any vertex of any triangle. Thus, any median of a triangle bisects its area. So at the end of the day, the point of this ex exercise was to know that the median from a vertex to the opposing midpoint will divide the area of the triangle in two. Okay, that's going to be important. So finally, let's look at a counterexample here. Shivani measured this right triangle and notice that a median bisects the right 
angle. So here's a median from the vertex to the opposing midpoint. It's bisecting that right angle of 90 degrees. She conjectures or she concludes that a median will bisect the right angle in all triangles. Is this conjecture correct? So to try and use this logic for another right angle triangle, we've drawn this right angle triangle here and we're drawing a median from vertex B to the opposing midpoint D, opposing sides midpoint D. In this right triangle, ABD, so angle ABD, ABD, this angle, and angle DBC, DBC, this angle, are clearly not equal. Thus, the median does not bisect the right angle. I'm not sure why they showed us this example, but in any event, the median does not always <coughs> bisect the right angle. Not sure why we would have thought it did. And just, just this, in this particular case, it happened to because it's an isosceles triangle. Finally, the key concepts. A line segment joining the midpoints of two sides of a triangle is parallel to the third side and half as long. So we determined that. If it joins the midpoints, it's parallel to the base and it's half as long. So if this is one or this is L, this is two L. Okay, that's the first property we learned. 